Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets from uh, the uh, intermarket analysis perspective, as always. Be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers, www.tradesignal.com. And you can certainly download the app from the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of uh, price action this morning, we have Japan on holiday. China is uh, certainly online uh, and back uh, from its holiday. Uh, the Chinese market certainly finished higher, 0.8% higher, and the Hang Seng 0.9%. Certainly rallying on the back of US indices moving higher on Friday. Even with the likes of the uh, inflation data in the US certainly coming in stronger than expected, and the dollar certainly moving higher as well. The market certainly, or Asian market certainly moving higher in the expectation that the Fed will still, uh, given the fact that the Aussie and Kiwi was up overnight as well, the Fed will still uh, remain on hold uh, and uh, going into Wednesday's FOMC decision. And also there seems to be some sort of front running with regards to the BOJ. Obviously insiders have information uh, in advance before me and you. Uh, it certainly isn't a, um, a laissez-faire or a free market at all. I mean, it's uh, certainly dictated by certain individuals. So... Uh, again, our job is really to read between the lines and see what these individuals are doing and how they're front running the markets. Whether it, uh, we all know it's illegal, but that's just the way the game works. Okay, for now it's uh, uh, trying to decipher what is happening now. I've certainly been stopped out on my FTSE shorts this morning, also my Nasdaq shorts from Friday as well. Uh, I currently have a active short on the Euro stocks, and now I've switched my bias on the Nasdaq moving long, given the fact that it's broken past the key 4840 zone. Uh, so for now, even though we had uh, stronger inflation data, again, should have, should have, should have been net, net negative. Uh, also, with regards to the FTSE, it certainly has pushed higher. Even though oil prices have, haven't really moved higher, uh, we've had, we have a 0.6 dollar, uh, uh, well, less than a dollar move on oil higher. And yet the uh, FTSE certainly is reacting disproportionately. But having said that, it certainly is supported to a large extent by a weaker sterling. Okay. Uh, but this morning we had set two weaker earnings results from the likes of LV and uh, Mighty. So certainly two companies. One was issued one issued a profit warning. The other one certainly was struggling as well. Uh, now it certainly seems that uh, S and P has certainly pushed the uh, FTSE higher. Although European stocks remain are still lagging given the Deutsche Bank concerns. Also Miss Merkel with regards to her election, uh, another blow for her for her as well. We still have political uncertainty in Spain and Italy at present. So again, a lot of uncertainties. Now we have Trump and Clinton, the US election uncertainty. That's ongoing too. Okay. Uh, in terms of a weak data as well, I mean, we had Michigan sentiment as well on Saturday, certainly, or Friday, we certainly weak. Uh, Mr. Juncker, certainly pro-Brexit concerns. Mr. Weedman, anti-QE concerns. And we have had further comments uh, this morning with regards to a source stating that there will be no additional QE via the ECB. So everything is indicating lower. That's my understanding, okay? Uh, but these markets are certainly moving higher on on the premise of potentially front-running the BOJ. Okay, so really it's our job to read between the lines. So I've been stopped out my FTSE short this morning, looking to re-enter if I get 6, 8, 20, so, so certainly patiently waiting for that entry. Okay, now let's look at the actual te uh, technical uh, picture. As you can see here, the, the German DAX certainly has gapped higher by almost 100 points. The pivot high and the FTSE is around 10.380, currently trading around the 10.360 zone on German DAX. Okay, so 10.380 is your key resistance zone, so watch out for 10.380, folks. Okay, 10.380 is your resistance zone with an unfilled gap below. Okay, 60-minute chart, still lower lows and lower highs, so certainly... Uh, one can't get too bullish, although the FTSE certainly has been very strong. And a daily chart, the German DAX still remains an inside bar, so basically consolidating within the red candle and no real movement higher. Okay, so certainly indicating a bearish move. In terms of the uh, actual French CAC, let's just bring that up for you as well. Okay, let's go to the daily chart first and foremost. Here we go. Okay, so again, bounced off the key support zone. Okay, on the daily chart, really in no man's land. 60-minute chart certainly seems to have bounced, okay. Still in the concept of lower lows and lower highs, so one can't get too bullish on the French CAC. Again, using your FIB retracement, we're into that FIB 50%, so watch out for uh, resistance on the uh, French CAC, okay. 10-minute chart, you are into horizontal resistance here with an unfilled gap below, so again, watch out for those gaps, okay. In terms of the FTSE 100, let's bring up the daily chart first and foremost, okay. Daily chart, you're looking at a uh, H&S formation, uh, you are into that 50 to 61% retracement. You're onto that key diagonal, well, key neckline. So again, can we remain below that neckline? That's the question. If the FTSE remains below that neckline, then your bias remains bearish. 
if the FTSE, FTSE starts to uh, push higher and uh, obviously goes above and closes above, then obviously the uh, bearish trade is off. 60 minute chart, the FTSE, you have this key diagonal trend line holding resistance at 200 MA and the FIB 61%. So again, we shall see. Now, I did have a stop loss at 68140. It seems to be a pivot high, and that's exactly where I was stopped out, unfortunately. So again, I'll have to reassess. 10 minute chart, certainly uh, past our pivot R3 resistance, which is very, very impressive. Again, your key resistance really is 6820, and that's a zone that I'd be happy to short the FTSE. If I do get a pivot, a double top again at 6814, maybe tempted again. But for now, sitting on the sidelines, okay. Again, unfilled gap below it remains at 6710, so keep an eye on that. Almost a 100 point rally on the FTSE 100 today. So, very impressive move on the FTSE, okay. But for now, it's resistance is seen at 6820 and 6815. Let's have a look at the Euro stocks now, last but not least, okay. Euro stocks, impressive move, impressive move. Daily chart, still an inside bar, okay, still an inside bar. Uh, we certainly have failed to hold that key support zone. So again, next level of support technically should have been 2,900. Okay, so 2,900. Watch out for 2,900 on the uh, on the actual FTSE 60 minute chart. Again, it certainly is uh, looking to potentially close the gap at 2,910. That was the trade that I am actually looking at, and that's the trade that I'm currently in. So looking to close at 2,910 zone below. Given the uh, ongoing concerns with regards to Deutsche Bank, etc. Certainly will look to uh, maintain that pressure. So again, you do have an unfilled gap, but first of all, that needs to close. So your unfilled gap remains at 2.935, and let's see if they can currently close that gap, okay? 2.935, and then obviously the pivot low is seen at uh, 2.930. So 2.935, 2.930. And you've certainly held the resistance at 2.970 on the Euro stocks, okay, folks? Righty then, okay, I think that's a, uh, a wrap then, folks, okay, in terms of uh, European indices. Really, are, you, as you can see, certainly into resistance, certainly struggling here and looking at further weakness, okay, folks? Uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the, uh, the bonus. Goodbye.